that Christ lives in me. With longing, all my heart is filled that like him I may be. As on the wondrous thought I dwell that Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Oh, what a salvation this that Christ lives in me. Amen. Sister Patrice Burley comes to sing a solo. I want to say thank you so much for being here uh, tonight. We welcome you. We're so glad that you are here. And I'll tell you what, we're just excited. Always be, love being around God's people. We are so glad to see you. Good to see visitors here. Yes, and good to see visitors. Um, yes, and uh, we, we thank the Lord so much for you. We appreciate you uh, being with us. All right. Let's bow our heads in prayer, if we will. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And, Father, we thank you and we praise you so much that we can be in the house of God and asking you, dear God, that you'd bless tonight. Help us, Patrice Burley, to minister to us. Bless these that are listening. Thank you for helping each one get here. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, Sister Patrice Burley. We, we appreciate it. And by the way, her birthday was this week. That's right. And it's wonderful Tuesday. And happy birthday to you. May God bless you. When I think of all my faults and my failures, when I consider all the times I let God down. I am humbled by the grace he has extended. I'm amazed at the mercy I have found. I could never earn his love on my own. Yet every time I come before his throne, I stand redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I stand redeemed before the great I am. When he looks at me, he sees the nail scar hands that bought my liberty. I stand. Even at my best, I am unworthy. I have nothing precious I can give. A broken life is all I have to offer. And yet, it's a priceless gift to him. The bitter mark of sin will never fade away but i can come before him on a shame i stand redeemed by the blood of the lamb i stand redeemed before the great i am when he looks at me he sees the nail scar hands that bought my liberty. I stand reading. Thank you. All right, wonderful. Would you open up the Word of God, if you will, the Psalms in chapter 68? Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Patrice Burley. We'll get right into the Bible study. We're going to have prayer after the Bible study tonight and preaching and teaching tonight, okay? And um, Psalms chapter 68, what a wonderful song, and we appreciate you so, so much. Appreciate you all. God bless you. And um, and so Psalms in chapter 68, been going through these Psalms, what a blessing. It is going through them. And, uh, and we will pick up here. In verse uh, three, but but let the righteous be glad. You see, let them rejoice before God. See in the songs, you can see that God wants His people to be happy. 
We're going to go through trials. We're going to go through troubles. But, friend, we can be happy. That's one thing the devil can't take away, okay? Um, he can't take away what God gives us, the joy. You see? Hey, listen, friend. When we prayed, we asked God to forgive us for our sins. We're right with God, you know? Um, the, that's why in Psalm 51, uh, David said, give me back that joy, right? Give me, he, he, restore, because sin breaks fellowship. But what, what, once you confess your sin, you forsake it, you know, the blood is applied, you know, and thank God for God's people, uh, uh, like David, you know. Um, and, and, you know, I, I've talked to some of the most humble, and we got some here tonight. See, I know the Lord, the Lord has um, you know, punished me. Yes, he has, but he loves me. Uh, I've done some things. He's shown me he loved me. I admire you for that. You, I admire you for that. And some of, there's some of the happiest Christians, you know, they don't justify. They don't say, oh, God's unfair. How dare God do this to me? You see, the attitude that we have is we have more than we deserve, you know, and you're happy, you see. That's why you can throw Paul into prison, into jail, and he writes, rejoice and be glad, right? Uh, Paul and Silas, they threw him in the, j in the jail. They started singing in the book of Acts, right, in chapter 16, right? They started singing praises to God, right? There was an earthquake. And I'd say if the keeper was going to kill himself, and Paul said, don't do it. He's thinking about others. He said, don't hurt yourself. Isn't that right? And people got saved. You know? I, I tell you, they put Christians, they chopped their heads off. They put them, they, 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 they burnt them. They literally burned them. And they tortured them. And they were singing praises to God. All they had to do is stop that Bible you got. That Bible you have is a preserved word of God. And it cost them their life so you can have it. All they had to do is stop writing it. How can they be glad? Heaven. Heaven, Matthew 10, 28. Matthew 10, 28. Fear not man who can destroy your body, but rather fear God who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Amen. And, and so, uh, uh, oh, Paul writes in the prison, on the bad situations and, and sad situations, he writes to the Christians, and you read the epistles, rejoice. Rejoice forevermore. Isn't that right? Again, I say rejoice and be glad. And the Bible says in Psalm 68, but let the righteous be glad. Underline that, righteous. Now, there's two types of righteousness. There's two types of righteousness. You could take the baby. You, you could take the baby to the nursery. Whenever you, you feel welcome, okay? You feel welcome. Make sure the monitor is on for her. Make sure the monitor is on for. Her. Anytime you need to, um, the monitor um, is on, and you want need to watch and help in the nursery. And, and 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 the monitor, you can hear it. You can hear it, and you can see it. Isn't that wonderful? Thank God for our nursery. Hasn't God been so good to us? Praise God for the nursery. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? and be able to watch it on the, in the nursery, be able to hear it in the nursery. God's blessed us with these things. But, but um, I want you to underline it, but let the righteous. Let me hear you say the righteous. That, that, there's two types of righteous. Um, we're righteous by the blood of Jesus, justified in God's sight, made right, declared right through his blood. That's right, Romans 5. And uh, thank God for it. And then there's righteous living. Righteous living. Amen. Righteous living. Just doing right. Asking God to forgive sins. First John 1, 8, 9, and 10. You better get familiar with that one. If we confess our sins, he is faithful just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And in that chapter, you know what it says, First John chapter 1? First John. First epistle of John. If, um, if we say that we have no sin, we're liars. <laughs> we deceive our own selves. The righteous confesses. Amen. And you confess the sin. You ask God to forgive you. You forsake it. And you work on it again. You know what Jesus said? Okay. He, he said, if a brother offends, uh, Matthew 18, when you read it, Matthew 18, about forgive your brothers. Oh, how, much, how many times are we supposed to forgive? Jesus said, 70 times seven. seven. What he's saying is, no matter how many times, we're supposed to forgive. Now, if Jesus said that, God keep forgiving us. I'm not saying when we intentionally 
rejoice to do it. Say, hey, you said this and all that. Just being sorry. Amen. For, forgive me, Lord. And, and, and working on it. That's how you grow. That's how you grow. See, the devil wants people to say, hey, hey, look. You, you ain't gonna never overcome it. You, you look like a lousy, stinking person. You need, you deserve hell. You, 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 what you say and what I say is, of course we deserve hell. But Jesus saved us. He forgive us. Amen. He, if he used David, he'll use me. If he used Peter, he'll use me. Amen. If he used Jonah, he used me. Hello? You ever think about that, though? God used Jonah. Had one of the greatest revivals. Read the book of Jonah and study it. At the end of the, at the, end of the it's, it's not a lot of chapters. <laughs> you gotta read that. It's your fun. I don't, people don't have to go to the movies and they don't have to do all that stuff at, at times. You can just read the Bible. You can get a picture of some of this stuff. And right. it's, it's something else, isn't it? Oh, Jonah running. You know how he was running from the Lord and the whale and all that. Spooled about. He started running, doing what God wanted him to do. He preached these people thousands, thousands, thousands getting saved. I mean, I'm talking about even huh, we need it in our land. We need, we, we, we need the politicians. <laughs> we we got to pray for these liberals. Isn't that right? And, and wicked people. But you want to know what? A revival broke out. So many people got saved. But guess who's pouting? Guess who's complaining? Because he was prejudiced against the Ninevites. Guess who's pouting? Should have been rejoicing. Jonah. Read the last chapter of Jonah. And God had to get on him. Because he had hatred towards these people. He is mad because God is merciful. You see, friend, because there was hatred, he didn't love those people. And, and God wants us to be like him. He died on the cross. No matter how bad wicked people have done us, no matter how wicked people have, have, have done, or no matter what they have done to whoever, you know, God wants us to be a forgiven people. Isn't that right, friends? And, uh, but God used them. God used p cussing um, Peter. Cursing, and that right? And didn't, I don't know the Lord, but he got right with God. He got right with God. And, you know, God, in the last book of Jonah, God put it there so that we can see the weakness and the frailty and look at a man that God said, you want to know, by my grace and by my mercy, I'm going to use this man. And we're going to look back in history. God did a lot of things because of the Bible, not because of a person sometimes. That's right. But he honors his word. He honors his word, friend. Isn't that right? And God, if God will use people that did so many things that are wrong, friend, I want to encourage you to keep pressing on. How much more God will use you and God will use me? Learn to forgive yourself. Learn to claim God's forgiveness and move on. And learn from the mistakes like people like Jonah, the things that they did wrong, like Peter when he failed, like David when he failed. Isn't that right? Learn. Learn to keep on going. Learn, learn off this psalm. Learn that this was a psalm to the chief musician of his belief. This is a psalm or song of who? If you if you got a study Bible, it, there's a title there. This is a psalm of King David. All that he'd been through. His own son tried to kill him. His own son tried to kill his daddy. That's why it's so important to read your Bible. Okay, you read David and Goliath. Yeah, I know about him. That's wonderful. First Samuel 17. Keep reading. Keep reading after the Goliath. Read the end of 1 Samuel. Go into 2 Samuel. Go into 2 Samuel. Go into his life. And see the awful things that happen. How he committed adultery and had took her husband, I mean, took the wife and had the husband killed, one of his best soldiers. And look how God had to bring things in his life when his baby, he struck their baby dead. But he kept on going. And his own son 
his own son rape his daughter, the son raped his sister. And then the brother got mad and killed his brother. And David had to go to a funeral. He's got a runaway child. He's got a raped daughter. He's got a son with long hair like a hippie, like a girl, longer than a lady's, coming to kill his daddy. Who David begged his army, don't kill my son. I love my son. I know he's trying to kill me. Please don't kill him. And they got so mad at David, they made to kill him because he loved his son so much. And he's crying. He wished he died for his son. He loved him. And then the diseases that came upon King David, the diseases in his body, the diseases, almost dying. Look how God uses this great king. Look how God blesses this man. Look what he says in Psalm 68. Look what he says. Looking at Psalm 68, going through, good to see y'all coming in in Psalm 68. He says in verse 3, but let the righteous be what? I love it. Let, him, let, let the righteous. Let them. Don't stop them. Well, look what they've done. They're washed by his blood. Well, they, they deserve hell. Yeah, we do too. Leave them alone. They got right with God. God's declared them right by his blood. Jesus has paid their price. Those are, those are, these are children of the king. These are God's people. These are saints. You say, Pastor, I don't feel like I'm a saint. If you're a child of God, you're a saint. No, we need to act like it. We've got to remind ourselves. Look at that Psalm 68. What a psalm. King David, he, he, he realizes that he's glad God's forgiven him. And, and God's using him. And God's given him great victory. And he's saying, if God gave me great victory, God will give you great victory, you precious ones in this room. I know you have difficult times. I know you have some sorrows. I know it gets difficult when the devil attacks you. I, I know you're God's people. God bless you coming in the middle of the week. And God wants you to be glad because he's, he saved you from hell. Satan can't take that away from you. You have eternal life. Rejoice for your name is in heaven. They came and says, we're cast out demons. We're happy. Jesus said, don't rejoice about that. Rejoice your names are written in heaven. Amen. 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 He said, and when you're persecuted, leap for joy. Many um, uh, rewards for you. Many rewards for you. Amen. Many rewards. But you got to keep at it. You got to stay at it. My precious joy, when she was a little kid, we had a revival. Um, Pastor uh, Dave Baker, he was preaching. He's the one that shot himself, the preacher. Uh, I believe he's in heaven. Don't ever do that. That's the, 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 you lose rewards when you do that. I feel sorry for him. Many re rewards that he lo you lose when you do that. You know, somebody asked, can you take your life and you still go to heaven if you're saved? Well, once you're saved, you have eternal life. And there's a time, the preaching, the teaching, all the wonderful things that he's done uh, through Bible college. And man, graduated. And I've preached for him years ago. He preached for me. And um, I'll tell you what, you're talking about um, what, what he was. He was a coach. He ran for mayor, um, pastoring a church. And uh, man, I tell you, people getting saved, people getting baptized. There's one time you're talking about the blessings of God on his life. He had a podcast. He had number one of the, one of the number one books of selling. By the way, when a when a soldier is wounded by the devil, I don't I don't see the United States America uh, um, Army man stopping under soldiers or spitting on them or, or talking about them in a bad way. That's that's crazy. Thank God for the good that the man did. But he was preaching and. My, and my, my joy, my daughter Joy, a little kid, he was preaching a wonderful sermon on rejoice. Rejoice if you're persecuting. Jesus said, leap for joy. He said, it's blessed, it's blessed when you're persecuted for Christ. So Joy, she's a little, she's a little toddler there, a little toddler, little junior or whatever. You know, she's just, she just young. You know, little kids, they hear preaching. 
And so she went home to Connecticut and said to my nephew, um, she said um, uh, uh, to my, my nephew, and he's just a little boy today, he don't know the better, please persecute me. She heard the sermon. Please persecute me. You know how kids, how, Lily, how old are you? Might have been Lillian's age. How old Lily? How, how old are you? How old Lily? How old is she? It might have been a little bit over, maybe eight, maybe eight, maybe eight. But maybe they were small. They were small. Please persecute me. And, um, and uh, 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 he didn't know what it was. And Joy tried to explain to him is when somebody hits you, somebody hits you, please persecute me. <laughs> he, I don't think it was a wooded bat. I think it was a plastic. <laughs> Ooh, I was so mad. Rap, rap. <laughs> he persecuted me. Oh, we're so bad. I said, Joy, you don't do that. And, and, and I said to my nephew, you don't do that. And, um, but um, uh, uh, Dave Baker said, preach on um, please persecute me. But you got to stay at it, friend, because here's a pastor, here's a preacher, and had, I don't know, maybe 11 kids, and um, a beautiful family, a beautiful wife. And, um, and I preached for him. He preached for me. And um, um, he might have he done more for the Lord than all of us, put together maybe. But I don't care who it is, you let your guard down. You get out of your prayer closet. You get from meditating in this word. You stop being humble. That gladness can be taken away. Because King David said in verse 3, Psalm 68, verse 3, but let the righteous be glad. And here is a preacher at one time had so much gladness where the devil, there's a real devil and there's a real flesh where he got so depressed and sad. They said two bullets went into the hospital, went into the emergency room and put two bullets in him. And I love you, precious people. And I'm telling you, there's a real devil. And he wants to take your gladness away. He wants to take your joy away. And I beg you, when you sin, read Psalms 51. Don't put two bullets in your, in your chest. Ask God to forgive you. Whatever he messed up in, we don't know. We don't know all of it. Whatever he didn't want to face his wife and the kids in church, the best thing to do is confess and ask God for forgiveness. And go through whatever punishment God has for you and loves you. And realize that God wants to use you. There's a God that forgives. And he preached this what I'm preaching to you. It's one thing to preach it. It's another thing to accept it. And you precious people in this room, I love you. You know I do. And I, and I just feel so sorry for some of you because you read the Bible and you know what to do. You got to apply it. You know, if, if you're going to teach uh, God will forgive people, you got to accept God's forgiveness. All right? You, you you got to you got to apply what 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 God says. You see what I'm saying? And so, and 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 you know when you look at a situation like that, I want you when you leave here tonight, I don't want you to let no nobody take what God has for you, and take that joy and take that peace away. You let God do what He wants to do in your life. Don't let nobody stop you. You learn from people's mistakes. Learn from them. And uh, let, let it make you drive you to your knees. Isn't that right? In verse 3, but let the righteous be glad. God, God wants you to be happy. God wants you to be joyful. And the Bible says um, uh, you meditate in his word. In Psalms chapter 1, what does it say? If you meditate in his word day and night, what does it say you do? You'll prosper. Psalms 1. Read verses 1 and 2 and 3, okay? You will prosper. You'll have joy. And I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's me, if it's another preacher, if it's you. You stop meditating that word. There's no telling what the devil's going to do to you. You got, to, girls, boys, 
You've got to spend time meditating in his word. Meditate on it. Isn't that right? Take time out. Don't you want to prosper? You'll be glad. It's good. The, the, the word of God was found and brought joy to my soul. Read uh, Jeremiah 20. Read how the word of God can bring joy. Isn't that right? Hey, friend, if you don't get nothing done, what's got to be getting done? On top of our list, what do we got to make sure we get it done, friend? Meditating on his word. Okay? Nothing else gets done, don't get done. All right? If it's, even if it's one chapter, right? Gen let me say Genesis Revelation. But you're going to be like me if you don't do it. Or you'll be like my sister pastor here. If you don't mark it down, if you don't have some way to remember where you left off, a day go by, have some type of bookmarker in it, okay? You got to find out where you left off if you're going to go through the whole Bible. Uh, days go by, and you say, well, where do I leave off at? What chapter? You end up reading the same chapters over and over again. <laughs> you know, right? Friend, it's not, it's not hard. Just write down the day and the day where you left off. You wake up the next day, pick up on it. If you read three chapters a day, you can read the Bible in a year. One year, quickly. That means if you read six chapters, you can read it in a half a year. If you do more, you can read it quarterly. The whole Bible. This is going to break your heart. Hey, young people, this is going to break your heart. Some people, 80 years old, they ain't been through the whole Bible yet. I love you. Time goes by fast. I love you. You know I do. I'm not getting on you. I'm not kicking you. I'm trying to encourage you. I'm trying to encourage you. Right? You know I am. This year flew by. January. Some of you are so excited. You're going to read the whole Bible through the whole year. You even got out of Genesis yet. <laughs> I love you. You, you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> My sister, Pastor, chuckling. Calm him down, sister. <laughs> we love you. We love you. Hey, hey, friend. I'm Would you look up here? Some 85 years old. Ain't been through the whole thing yet. That's her. Come on, friend. If you're going to be glad, you're going to know this Bible. Amen? And I guarantee you what happened to the preacher. And I love my friend. I believe we'll see him in heaven. I I believe when you're saved, you, you're, you're saved forever. You have eternal life. I don't see how, the, and there's no way what that preacher did. There's, I don't see how there's any way that man could not be saved. But you say, Pastor, Pastor, what happened? What happened? I believe you get away from the book. I believe you get out of this book. I believe you get out of this book. Hey, friend. I believe you get out of this book. I asked the man of God, the pastor, I said, what happened? What in the world happened? They said it wasn't a, there was not a dry eye in the service. People were crying. People were crying. He resigned, broke his wife's heart, broke the church's heart, broke his kid's heart. They love that man of God just like you love me and I love you. He didn't plan on doing this. He had to resign. His name was in the paper. God blessed that man with so much. So much. He blessed them with so much. I asked that man, what in the world happened? Give me some advice. I was just a young preacher. I don't want to do that to my wife in the church. He said, stay in the book. He said, stay, in, stay right and meditate in this book. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. You want to be a happy camper? You want to have joy? You want to end well, and I want to end well? Stay in this book.
I make sure I meditate in this book. You can, you can meditate on your phone now. You can meditate on your computer, the Word of God, the King James Version. Make sure it's authorized King James Version, though. The devil loved that. You just you, These people say that it's a Bible. It's not a Bible. It's not an authorized King James in our English-speaking language. Make sure you got an authorized King James Version Bible. And if you don't have one, I'll go get you one. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. We give you the praise for your goodness. And... And we thank you so much, and we praise you so much, and we give you the glory, we give you the honor that you rightly deserve, you rightly deserve. Thank you for the word of God. May we be glad, may we have joy, may we end with joy, may we have a life of joy. Help me to help these precious ones. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. How many of you, uh, 